Trig is a polyphonic granular sampler that processes pre-recorded audio material in the form of synchronous and asynchronous granular synthesis. While there are many great devices that include a lot of additional features besides the typical granular synthesis functions and often have a graphical user interface, this device is deliberately kept very simple and works mainly with the basic parameters that are relevant for granular synthesis. In fact, I originally developed the tool for teaching purposes in order to provide a good explanation of the individual parameters and their flexible handling. First, a sample is loaded into the editor window by clicking the load button or by drag and drop. The basic idea of granular synthesis is based on the theory that you can cut sonic material into very small chunks, the so-called grains, and then work with them creatively. In this case, a very short sound fragment is triggered again and again with a regular frequency so that a kind of loop of the sound snippet results. The length of the loop can theoretically be very short so that the original pitch of the sound is no longer perceivable as such, but a different pitch results which is determined rather by the loop speed. By inserting different window types that wrap around the single loop with an envelope, the occurrence of the noise due to discontinuities at the start and end points of the loop can be avoided. Eight different window types can be selected for windowing that shapes individual envelopes for the generated grains. Furthermore, the loops can also overlap, so that above a certain trigger speed the loop sounds have the effect of smearing. Tools that operate granular synthesis theoretically have very precise access to the individual fragments of the sound, so that these can now be controlled, changed and, in particular, provided with random values in very different ways. In this device, this can be achieved with a deviate knob, which allows certain deviations from the basic value depending on the amount. The basic pitch value is initially determined by pressing a MIDI note. The middle C plays the sample and its grain at the original pitch. If several notes are played one after the other, which can result in polyphonic structures such as chords, as with a sampler, each loop first starts in its cycle so that interesting variations can result even at a slow tempo, that means with a low trigger frequency. If all loops should have the same starting point, this can be achieved simply by clicking on the sync button. While the device actually follows the principle of synchronous granular synthesis, where the grains are generated with a regular trigger frequency, there are two variations in the settings to make the process asynchronous or quasi-synchronous. If you increase the deviation factor, the trigger frequency varies between the set value as the central value and possible values above and below it, resulting in a continuous acceleration and deacceleration of the frequency. If you additionally activate the course button, the original set frequency remains, but there are more less skips depending on the set deviation amount, so that there are always interruptions within the trigger sequence. Both forms of deviation tend to be perceived as dynamic changes in the overall sound at higher frequencies. Due to the extreme speed at which the process quite often happens, the randomizations of the other parameters can also serve as enrichments of rather static sounds, giving them an interesting texture. The dynamic course of the notes can be additionally shaped by a simple envelope with an attack and a release parameter. The hold button has the function of a sustain pedal so that the notes continue to play even after the keys are released. When saving the Ableton Live session, it is important that the location of the sample that was last in the device is also added once in the so-called file preferences of Max, if the parent folder is not already part of the search path anyway so that the file can be found again immediately by the device when it is opened again. If a new folder is added to the file preferences, it will be only recognized when the Max application is quit. Therefore, if a new search path is created, it is recommended to save your Ableton Live project only after this procedure to make sure that the edited sample remains in the project.